Means let's go. Hey Todd, thanks for joining us. Oh, I guess I should change the scenery. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hey, um, yeah, all right. Thanks for joining us for In the Rack. This is season two, uh, episode three. Uh, the title of the stream for today is Practicing by Yourself and What It Takes and the Jeff calls it the ethics to uh, do so. So that's what we're going to concentrate on today. And I do have a very exciting announcement a little bit later in the show. Um, but right now, let's just catch up to see what Jeff has been doing with himself. Jeff, what have you been doing with yourself since the last time we saw you? Uh, I haven't practiced much. I, was busy. I just returned to work after a uh, serious back injury. Mm. I was out of work for about five months, almost six months from a back injury. Wow. So I got lots of pool time and a nice little break, but I recently just returned to work, so I've been super busy, haven't had much time to play. Right on, right on. Uh, right now, joining us in the in the chat, again, I apologize for starting at, starting out late. We usually start at 7, but, you know. Better late than never. Uh, thanks, Todd, for joining us, Russian Crush. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, so we're going to be talking about um, practicing on your own and what it takes to do so and do well, the ethics behind it. Um, and again, I would like to uh, announce a little bit later uh, something cool that's going to be happening next Thursday, actually. It's pretty close. Anyway, um... So as you can see in the very beginning panel, um, Jeff used to be Thor. Um, what have you been doing since your fall from the heavens? Uh, apparently I've become Birka Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Thor. I mean, the, uh, on work injury or back injury, I gained uh, almost 25 pounds. Yeah. So yeah. I can exercise. Yeah, if you notice, uh, I replaced the pictures uh, in the very beginning of people that I think we look like. Obviously, I've been told many times I look like Bolo Young off of uh, Enter the Dragon and uh, uh, Bloodsport with Jean-Claude Van Goddam. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. Anyway, um, back injury. Uh, what are you doing to alleviate the pain? This whole time I've been doing... Doing a chiropractor once a week. I've been doing physical therapy once a week. I've had massage 
twice a week for no happy once a week for two hours for like eight weeks straight happy ending mas- massages hopefully no <laughs> okay all right no no <laughs> but um, my back my back was black and blue after a couple of those sessions that ooh, was good stuff the really deep tissue kind of situation oh, yeah, I, going on i needed that desperately okay all right those of you out there um, just joining us, uh, if you've ever had a deep tissue massage, uh, if you have any uh, stories or maybe some advice, uh, because I heard that that really pushes the toxins out of your tissues and then that also makes you dehydrated and uh, it can almost make you feel sick, sort of. Yeah, I've done that. It's happened to me because uh, I had a massage done right before my, my massage. I went and ate out my lunch. And I got food poisoning from it. Ooh, so I was fine during my massage, but right afterwards, I got really thick. And I couldn't drink any water, but you're supposed to drink a lot of water after massage to help flush out the uh, lactic acid that's being released. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I couldn't drink any water for like a whole day because of the food poisoning. And I, the next day, I felt like I got hit by a truck because the lactic acid wasn't able to flush out of my body. And it was just awful. Well, if uh, if you're if you're getting a massage, especially for the first time, do you suggest any uh, prep work aside from maybe doing some manscaping and uh, brushing your teeth? <laughs> Not really. Just a uh, big thing with massage is in order for them to get rid of the deep tissue, we have to be able to relax and take deep breaths. Mm. If you want a deep tissue massage, deep breaths. Yeah, I have an extremely high pain tolerance, so I don't have much. Problems with uh, getting deep tissue massage, but if you can't, I mean, I mean, there's some spots still where I've almost jumped off the table because it <laughs> it hurts so bad. But afterwards, you know, you feel amazing. Yeah. Well, um, what if? Uh, so you said you have a high pain tolerance. Yeah. So if I, if I hit you in the junk right now, would you would you just be like, mm, it's okay? No, because that's a good <laughs> spot for everybody, no matter who you are. I'm just joking. I don't want to hit you your <laughs> um, Give it up to my cat, Luna. Uh, today, I believe, is the day that she is going to give birth. Uh, Gwen is upstairs right now in the room. Uh, it's very exciting. I wish we had a detachable cam so we could do the birthing of uh, a cat. So that would be kind of weird to have on a show. <laughs> But, oh, Gwen says we have one. So one, one came out of the chute. Uh, that's that's kind of gross and kind of exciting. Oh, black, I think. Yay. That is, that is exciting. So if you're joining, give thumbs up for the fact that um, our cat is giving birth right now. Um, unfortunately, this, the, what had happened was uh, Luna snuck out of the front door and had a wild night. And then in the morning, how regretful mornings are. Unprotected cat sex. Unprotected cat sex. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was one of those situations. Um, thank you for the thumbs up, Todd. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. I almost had to get uh, tested today for COVID because uh, so what. I do for work is uh, some of it is uh, teach a class, right? And um, one of the students was um, exposed. Well, the roommate was exposed. And then, so of course, uh, when something like that happens, you have to say something. So then it was a run around uh, going back and forth to the medical facility. And they're like, you know, you don't have to get tested if you weren't the direct person. Uh, then my supervisor was like, no, you got to go get tested because it's policy. And then, yeah, it was a big rigmarole. And I was actually kind of excited that they said that I was going to be quarantined for 10 days, but unfortunately I'm not. So I have to go to work tomorrow. How's the work situation for you, Jeff? Not bad. It, uh, I work in a paper production conversion plant. I run a machine that lines uh, giant rolls of paper with a plastic lining, molten plastic that cools as it runs through the machine. Mm. But it's 12-hour shifts of running a machine, and it's 
it can be pretty tough. My feet hurt like crazy the first like, four shifts. Right well, not, why don't you fly? You you can fly. You can't you? <laughs> just float. You're, you're Thor, for gosh sakes. Yeah, that was pretty rough on my feet. I mean, I mean, I once I got back into the groove of things, I mean, it picked up like I never left. Does but, Does the hammer help you out? No. Uh. No. <laughs> It wouldn't make it a lot easier, but... <laughs> what was the hammer's name? You should know this. Never not pronounced it. Oh, it's spelled wow. like M-J-O-R-N-I-R. I yeah. always forget how to pronounce it correctly. So if you if you actually know Thor's hammer's name, spell it out phonetically in the chat so we can take a stab at it. I know his second weapon is the Stormbreaker, which is like the axe-looking one. Yeah. The, I know that's the Stormbreaker, but I can't with, pronounce uh, it because it's some... With Groot's... Uh, hand which is kind of sick as the handle some norse pronunciation yeah miu mayu miu miu it's like monet monet was a painting <laughs> those of you out here all right uh moving right along so let's go to okay so we talked about what it takes to practice on your own so i i know from a bunch of our uh uh co-op i guess um channels that we work with um a lot of them have like myself have put out um practice videos and and stuff that you should try to do if you want to get a little bit more consistent so i'm going to just play a couple of them um tell me what you think here's one from darren um mr edit one uh, and this is his one of his earlier uh, pool drills what do you think about this one jeff so you know about it. Yeah. I mean, I haven't shot it like that where you just hit whatever ball you is lined up. I mean, I always try to do it in order, so it might be a little more difficult the way you try to do it. Mm hmm. Managed to complete it a couple of times. Well, uh, looks like he's doing pretty good. Um, my personal thought um, the drill seems really, really difficult. Um, and it would be hard as hell to just like from the get-go um trying to nail it but then again that's that's not what that's not what you do you 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 have to keep on practicing it and uh that way when you first do it it gives you a standard of where you're at and then as you practice uh gives you that that gauge of how well you're doing I, I do a drill similar to that. Instead of the L shape, I just do a line from the side rail out about seven or eight balls. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first started doing that drill, uh, it took me like seven or eight tries to complete it. And it was frustrating, but I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. I just kept working at it. And now I can do it almost first try every time. All right. So Tone to Win says, Minor? Minor? Minori? Yeah, that's how it's spelled. Mule, Mule Nor. Mule Nor. Mule Nor. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tone to win, thank you for joining. Uh, I've never seen you on my uh, chat before, but welcome uh, if you're just now joining. Uh, this stream is basically just a bunch of pool talk. Sometimes we play games, but today's episode, uh, what we're talking about is practicing by yourself and all the ethics that um, go into it so you can do it well. So if you have any uh, suggestions uh, when, you're, when you're shooting on your own and what keeps you going instead of getting bored or frustrated, please share it on the open chat and we'll share it out here as soon as we uh, see that you put something in. So moving on, uh, we are just chatting it up and I picked a couple videos from some collab uh, channels that uh, I talked to. So this one's from Eric Simpson, 29. First of all, I want to say he has a very righteous mustache. <laughs> like that is, that is porn worthy. And, and he's a ginger. That is a mustache. Like you, you're a ginger. I can't grow facial hair like that. But that ginger, I'm not a ginger. You look like a ginger. Are you blonde? Yeah. I've got red beard because I'm Scottish, but I'm mostly Swedish. But the reason why I picked this actual video, and if you notice, I sped it up because uh, 
think we can, you know. But um, here's the thing. He makes it look very easy. But I can guarantee you that um, it took him a couple tries when he first started doing this. And um, the only way that he would be able to nail it like this is obviously if he practiced. And you know, it's you got a set of goal for yourself. And then now he's just um, showing off here. No, I'm just joking. He's he's obviously uh, doing some practice, practicing here, rolling him down, and then shooting him right when he feels that is right. Have you ever done this drill? No, but I right. Do you think this is a drill or just a? Yeah. So here, here, uh, I like, I like his shooting right here because he shows that there's not just one way to get to get shape, um, but he does it well. He does both the follow and the draw very well. And I have to admit, um, drawing like that isn't easy. But with his his kind of short short uh, kind of I don't know punch draw on there is something I'm not used to, but obviously it works for him. And then he has one right here that's the power draw. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you? So you would say that that takes practice to do a multitude of, or a couple of the shots that he did in there. Yeah, lots of practice, um, lots of patience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been following you guys since the tourney. Nice job giving out. But and info for pool players. Thanks, Nguyen. Thank you for uh, following since then. Uh, I appreciate that you're in support and that you are uh, with us tonight. Um. Yep. So, good job to Eric. Eric, uh, I know that you did that not too long ago, but it was really entertaining and uh, I really like the the outcome of the practice that you put in there. Uh, and then of course the last one. Who would I be if I didn't add the juggernaut to Welcome back, my everybody. lineup? This is a little Today Chris. Today I would like to show you how uh, I line up a one rail big shot, 620, which also works and might have gotten one up rail higher. Kick shot. Let's get started. Guys. But I guess this is, okay, or not I guess, example, this is uh, to try to bank the eight one of his uh, more popular uh, In order to videos measure, that he put out. And it's uh, trying to figure out the bank. Contact to bank and way banking. Pocket, we have to Unless you just automatically the see the angles, corner pocket to side that's something pocket that you have to practice. Is four right. diamonds. Bank. Starting here from the corner pocket, Banks. you would count one, I use two, I just, three, I just know four, including the side pocket. And how and I shoot starting it from the side pocket, the you would count so one, well, two, hard, three, four, uh, going to the corner pocket. Draw to make it go a little bit wider. The reason why you have to know that is that there's draw four different wider, measuring lines that I'm going to, uh, to show you, a bit, and so one of those measuring lines mm -hmm. is going to help you figure out the where the eight ball has to hit on the opposite yeah. side rail in order but for it to go. most of the time, I just kind of visualize it and just know what's going to happen. The first measuring I've line never you look at really starts to here it. at the corner pocket. Multiple memory, Take your cue just knowing exactly and lay it across the table from corner pocket to corner pocket. Over and over and over again. And you should already know yeah. that the distance just, from this corner pocket to this now. side pocket is four diamonds. I, uh, I use so a couple yourself, of uh, banking of techniques. Um, one of them that, that works for me when the cue ball is very close to the rail or even one on the rail is center to edge this aiming. Line here shows you um, that if I don't know if you're familiar with that, that from uh, Dan Shuffet, but uh, two, I took opposite side rail, uh, that is where the ball a little bit of time and I actually here, got his uh, DVD series pocket. and studied it for a good, I want to say a good three months. To look at is one um, diamond away from the by no pocket. means am I an authority on the CTE. So how many diamonds away are we from um, the side Shooting pocket? or aiming one technique, but it has helped me out and what is half the uh, three noticed in a lot one and a half <laughs> in a lot of play <laughs> like tip into your queue and move but over you know you know what i see about about uh 
Now we have a cool line that shows that if there was a ball under a lot of it is instinctual line, where, where you, it feels right, the stroke the feels right, you you're in stroke, in and, to go here, and your rhythm, the, the rhythm's the there. But sometimes um, you get yourself the in a bad spot, and, here in and you gotta corner pocket and get confused on what pocket. you're gonna do. And now how many diamonds away are I we use the these pocket? shooting references One, to get me back two. on track and. What's happened we'll say the CTE Stan Shuffert method one. has gotten me out of some very like cue, when I have to cut the ball long nine. distances and a very thin cut. Now we've got another line that I shows usually nail them. So what, this line, what kind of shooting uh have where we need to hit on the opposite side use? rail in order to bank the I've ball here into the cross side pocket. So it's not even the ghost ball. Yep. And for our Honestly. last measuring line, really we're only cool. one diamond away I've, from the side pocket. I've learned from books. And half of one like is books a is half. A play we'll take the tip end of our cue and only move oh, okay. over a half a diamond. I really don't have any style. Giving us our fourth this. measuring line that shows that it's if there was a ball underneath me. this line, right. we know where um, the opposite rail Todd says, we have to hit. Uh, I break to Make a ball, and I have a shot on the next ball. Then now that we have mark those four the position lines, of each ball. Ooh, that is takes a lot of time. The line that is and as I shoot, if I miss, I can reset easily and, and do it is the closest till I can the run ball. out. Then with so bank this eight ball here into the cross side well, pocket, and let's repeat, start and watch the repeat. Yeah, um, that is from the corner pocket. We are that's dedication right there. Do you have you ever done that where you break them and then you mark each ball? But this line is not and then try to run it out in the direction no? you want to bank. Nope. So let's move to the next pros line. and cons about that. Here we are three uh, diamonds away. The only con half would be three is one and a half. A lot of time to do that. But we are still not past the ball figure out in the direction runs, you want to bank. Which ones work? Which ones don't? So let's move over to the next line. Um, Two diamonds away from the cross side pocket. Half of two is one. And yeah, we are now I'm past saying. the eight ball. Uh, in Gwen, the if you're paying attention, uh, give us an update this on how many cats are that is popping out little the Luna there. Okay. Because um, if I were to measure so we're, we're here, getting about to the end of uh, little Chris's uh, half of one banking theory half. here. And basically what we're he's explaining, and I do agree with this because I use it from time to time, is that you know, you find out the That's middle. That's why we use this. Uh, two diamonds first, you figure out the triangle. Pocket. Then you figure out of two is one. Uh, which side is so closest to is the object are. ball. Uh, and then you do the now parallel shift. Now that we have this line, what you want to do is right? shift and then this that's line. Your new aiming spot. Um, by shifting the line, I do not mean <laughs> the parallel shift. Up to yeah, button degree two, you're just moving on the button degree two to where you're over the eight ball. A parallel shift is um, Nor you do just I mean picking up the shaft so you have one angle. If you pick your stick up and move it as a unit, now you're back where you started. Pivoting, that is a parallel shift. That means that by shifting the line. Well, over once you go over the, ball, the top of the ball, to the line it is straight perpendicular over. to the We're starting over angle. The eight ball, and we now have a point on the rail. Yeah, so that's a parallel where we have shifting. Eight ball hit, and then um, bank into the side. Pocket. That's when the transformers start the fight. Works. And the uh, Decepticons have an upper hand. <laughs> All right. Good job, Chris. Yep. He My was uh, another Farm. choice. Any of these uh, that uh, you want to check out their channels, uh, Little Chris, uh, that's what his channel is called. I sh you know what? Later, I'm going to put their um, links into the descriptions that's uh something i should have did to begin with i'm horrible bad bad man um yeah what are your thoughts about um first of all let's answer the question do you practice by yourself all the time do you practice with yourself all the time yeah you do that's actually how i got the nickname lone wolf because i always played by myself <laughs> all the time at the pool hall is it a tattoo on your back no, I'm it's not on sure. your back there. <laughs> Frank stamped that. <laughs> this is because you're you're a pack of one. No, uh, okay. So you practice by yourself. What what drives you on your practicing? Uh, what drives me is that I hate losing. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's a, that's my biggest drive. I do not like to lose, so I. Uh, I have no problem practicing by myself. You know, I have my little rituals I do. I have my games I do specifically. 
I got a question for you on that subject. What do you like to do when you practice by yourself? Like, what's your go-to thing? Uh, my go-to thing when I'm practicing is I, I actually have a routine. So the first one is I want to make sure that um, my mechanics are in line. So I do the – and this this it comes from Corey Lowry. Um, you basically just set – you set all the balls on the table. And you start at one point as far as as far away from the corner pocket as you can, and the first fifteen balls, you hit them center, and you hit them true, straight, dead center of the pocket, consistent every time. After those fifteen, then you shoot top, because you can you can tell whether if you're doing it correctly or not because of the rotation of the ball, and you can tell if you're aiming correctly. If you're because it gives you instant feedback of where the ball's headed, especially if you have a true level table. Um, then after I get done with um, you know shooting center, top and bottom, um, I put all the balls out on the table and I uh, shoot any ball in any order at pocket speed, just so I can. Um, practice my uh, variations of of speed control on my shots. And then after that, then I I always start out with my back cuts because I cannot stand back cuts. Mm. It is my weakness, and I spend most of my time practicing the back cut until the point where I'm just frustrated, and then I have to stop. Um, I did make a game out of it, though. Um, I take a back cut half a diamond out from the long rail and I start uh, basically from the fourth diamond up towards the corner pocket, uh, one full diamond over. So that way I have a back cut and I play around the world basically. So I start from the fourth diamond. If I make it, I move up to the next diamond, make it, make, move up to the next diamond, make it, and then make my way back. If, if I complete all that, then it was a good practice session for me. If I don't, um, I go outside and punch puppies. So, yeah. I love baby seals. No, well, no, actually. <laughs> um, what do you do? Um, well, I always warm up. Just uh, hit a few balls, all 15 on the table, just random, whatever, or just to make sure my stroke is in line. And my speed is under control. But uh, it depends on what my goal is. I usually try to set a goal for myself. Uh -huh. what I want to accomplish during that practice session. If it's just to hit balls, just to stay warmed up and stay, you know, up to date. I'll just hit random balls for a while. I might try to run a few racks, but uh, sometimes I want to focus on my weaknesses, which takes a lot of patience on your weaknesses because it's so frustrating. One of my weaknesses uh, is when I'm uh, shooting a straight draw shot, drawing straight back off the uh, object ball is one of my hardest things for me to do. And I've worked on it all the time, and I still have a lot of trouble with doing that. Oh, yeah. It always goes out just to one side, just a little bit. It's so hard for me to hit just dead center draw and come straight back. Yeah. So I work on that a lot. If I want to be shooting, if I plan on shooting for like, four or five hours practicing, then I'll usually just play 14.1. And I'll just for, play that for, nonstop. For the people that don't know what 14.1 is, um, explain what 14.1 is. Uh, so I always start with uh, just a regular um, one ball off, 14 racked up. So we rack up, normal rack, no matter what order it is, you take the front, the head ball off, and move it somewhere where you can Make that ball and then break the rack at the same time. That's mm. actually, uh, I just start with that instead of trying to play a safety break, which is kind of do by yourself unless you want to practice that right. safety break for competition. But so, if you hit any ball in any order, uh, uh, plop as a count. And then when you get down to the very last ball, you have to look ahead at least five or six shots to figure out which ball you want to leave last and where you're going to, how you're going to set up to make that last ball and break the rail or break the rack at the same time. 
Right, absolutely. So, so I do that for, I could do that for three to four hours easy. And then yeah. if I come across a shot that I'm not sure how to do, I just kind of screw up completely. I'll I'll redo that shot a few times just to get the, the muscle memory down. Yeah, and that makes sense. Um, just a quick shout out to Luna, my cat that's giving birth. Two kittens so far. Uh, we have a reporter on site. Gwen Beckham is there in the flesh watching these kittens shoot out of the <laughs> little kitty vagina. Um, but yeah, we got two kittens so far. One of them's black, I know that. So, um, yay. Let's pray for Luna that she uh, is doing well. This will be her second litter. You call it litters for cats? Is it litters? I think so. It's not like a gaggle or anything like that or a bushel of kittens. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, another thing. Uh, I want to say what's up to Jim Bang Time Pool. He's going to be hosting a, yet again another virtual nine ball pool tourney. But this time there is a monetary stake at it. So, yay for that. Make sure that you go to his channel if you want to partake and view some good pool shooting uh i'm pretty sure that a lot of people's game will be heightened now that there is a prize at the end of the yellow brick road to win so stay tuned for that i'm actually entered in that so i'm pretty excited um so yeah check that out um speaking of like uh money games Jeff, you don't usually play a whole bunch of money games, do you? Like, like pick up, um, like, I don't know, uh, what do they call it? Ring games. You guys don't, you, you don't play a bunch of ring games, do you? Gambling, money matches? Just, yeah. So, hey, man, you want to play for 20 bucks? Like yeah, that. yeah. Well, no, like, like, nine ball, two on the nine, one on the five kind of thing. No, I don't. I've never done any of that, and I don't know what the hell people are talking about. When they talk about they things like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of one one of the streams that I'm gonna have is actually a ring game amongst friends. Uh, it's gonna be nine ball. If you ever wanted to check that out, uh, Tone says fourteen one is a great game to play because it is really helps out your run patterns. Unfortunately, not a lot of people play it. It was a lot more popular back in the like fifties, sixties, and seventies. Until Paul Newman got his thumbs broke. Well, just joking. If you, if you, Paul Newman's <laughs> thumbs didn't break. Fast Eddie's thumbs got <laughs> If you know what movie I'm referring to, go ahead and write it in the chat. Um, yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, once it. Not anyway, how do you comb your hair? I'm just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> Around the 80s, nine balls started to kind of become popular because it's a much quicker pace and the racks go by faster. Yeah, it's for bangers. There's more drama. There's more safety plays. I mean, I've honestly, I've watched 14.1 tournaments online and it's just... You think 14.1 is boring to watch? It, yeah, it took me a few times to watch. I mean, it depends on who you're watching. Some of the guys that play really slow and really slow and methodical, it's just, it's kind of irritating to watch. But, you know, you got guys that shoot real fast um, and they just go off instinct. You know, that's, that was a little more fun to watch playing that. What about snooker? Do you think that's boring to watch? No. Is it because, is it because you play, you like to play, like you play it? Play yeah, it? I, I play it. I watch it on Facebook and YouTube all the time. Yeah. Who's your favorite player in snooker? I don't know. Not I Ronnie? Mean, not Ronnie, Ronnie? Ronnie O'Sullivan is the greatest snooker player that ever was. The guy is just inhuman. Really? But I also like Judd Trump, Mark Selby, Neil Robertson. Those guys are all monsters at the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it is fun to watch because it, the level of play that it takes to play snooker is just, it's so difficult and to run out the rack alone, let alone get a 147. It's just mind-boggling what it takes to be able to do that. Did you say mind-boggling? Yes, mind-boggling. <laughs> you know, when your thoughts get all bottled up. Okay, Um. all right. So, 
And that's your final point about uh, playing by yourself. And No, there's a couple of key things you want to do. All right. Hit those up. The, the biggest thing is patience. If you start getting frustrated and you start getting impatient because you're missing balls, then just slow down and do something else, like run drill or just hit a few balls just to get your stroke back in line and calm down. I don't recommend trying to just run out racks. Um, I do sometimes can be have a negative effect on your game. But I'm not saying that it is. Uh, we could do though if you really want to run out racks is uh break and then just give yourself ball in hand and try to run out. If you miss, free rack and go again. Well yeah, that that's actually another good uh drill that I like to do um is spread out the balls. I don't necessarily need to break them. But for me if I'm a seven um, I'll put seven balls, and I will try to run them out without missing. If I don't run them out, uh, I do it again and see if there is an average, and then I kind of take away my seven status and give me my three status. <laughs> what I'll oh. do with that, that same concept is I'll take a uh, rack of nine ball, and I'll spread the balls apart in a specific way so that I have to go across the table after every shot. Mm. So I'll put the one at this end, the you two like at this long. end, three at this end, four at this end. So I have to go back and forth just for just for better practice. Right, much. right. Just to make it a little more challenging. But I don't have anything tie up. I'm just more focused about getting around other balls and getting cue ball routes down. Yeah. Generally, I don't like going coast to coast. But uh, sometimes you got to. So. Anyway, um, so it's 8.02. I know we started a little late, but I do like to try to keep time and whatnot. So last thing that we have coming up, um, just so you guys know, February 4th, uh, I have this gentleman coming on in the rack. So you might as well tell all your friends to come join us and uh, whatnot if you have not yet guessed. Um, Francisco Bustamante? No. He doesn't speak English very well. No, I'm just joking. Um, no, I have Rodney Morris, who's going to make an appearance on In the Rack, February 4th, 7 p.m. Um, and we will run until he says he's tired, uh, which is kind of exciting. So um, he is an all-around badass. Yeah, really like his style because he really shoots – off of instinct. He just knows what to do and just goes for it. You know, he doesn't spend too much time pondering about shots. He just knows what to do and just shoots very aggressively and it's, oh, it's yeah. a lot of fun to watch him. Yeah. And not only that, he he has the same kind of style I do. I like to wear vests when I shoot pool. <laughs> so. I like to wear cummerbunds. <laughs> <laughs> Bow ties and cummerbunds. <laughs> and Chuck Taylors. But, yeah, so that's going to be exciting. Uh, inducted into the uh, BCA World uh, Hall of Fame. Um, he, uh, I talked to him not too long ago to set up this uh, interview with him. So it's going to be a chance for anybody to ask a pro any question that you want. Uh, he's a pretty cool dude. So, And one thing that I... He, that Gordon was telling me he's just a man like the rest of us. <laughs> you know? Maybe he can shoot the lights out and whatnot. I say what can you do? He has a pretty long list of accomplishments too. And, uh, Playing ten ball, race to twenty one, and it's fun rack right here. Runs it out perfectly. No problem. Bustamante is just like, you know what? I hate you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he threw the towel. He threw the towel on the last one, and that's the kind of dude he is. You know, he he makes you he he makes you feel feel good. He doesn't, you know. There's he's. Yeah. He smiles when he loses. He smiles when he wins. Uh, and what I think is important is that your your opponents don't have any animosity towards you when you know win or lose. So um, I did the uh, 
I did a full workshop with uh, Shane Bandoni. Yeah. And he was talking about uh, Bustamante. He said that is one guy that he has the hardest time playing money matches with. He said they've gambled, you know, thousands and thousands Bustamante? of dollars. Yeah. They've That's because he's Filipino, damn it. Filipinos are hard as hell to play. Bustamante gets them every single time they play for multiple thousand dollars. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but they, they have, you know, he, I agree. he is the Palpatine of pool. I'm sorry. He is. He has. He has Jedi powers. Yeah. Um. Oh, what's what's going on there? Nice. Let's just cut this off. Somehow. There we go. All right. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> Going back to the open chat. Um, yeah, that's... Smonte would be... If you... All right, so if you had to play a pro for $1,000, who do you think you'd be able to hang with? If I had to play a pro for $1,000? Yep. Like a race to, race to 10, and who do you think you would be able to hang out with? Or hang with? Well, let's pull up the... Uh... Fargo ratings, and let's see who's the lowest rated pro player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Tone says there's a good interview with the Rocket on Pool Player Podcast. Uh, can't, can't you check your? Oh, can't wait. Check your interview with him, though. Yeah, it should be kind of cool. Um, the thing that I pride myself about my channel is that nothing goes to plan. So it should be entertaining and we're both islanders so that's gonna be kind of cool too um like i said he's a pretty outgoing dude uh really cool shit uh and just talking with him uh there's a lot of energy there and whatnot and he's a big uh football fan so uh when you guys uh come check in on the 4th 7 p.m uh we'll get to know him a little bit and then we're gonna turn it over like we're doing right now Putting it to the open chat so he can see what you guys are sending in, and um, my, either myself or my co-host will pick out questions out of there and see if he'll answer them right then and there. Otherwise, he he can see them himself. He can go ahead and answer um, some of the some of the sites and um, uh, pool sites that he's involved with is uh, TSPN. He's a very big. Uh, Ambassador of that, he supports a hundred percent. Skyler Break Tips or Striker Break Tips, uh, he supports that as well. Um, Andy Billiards Claw uh, and the Break Break Rack. So if you want to check these out, go www.breakrack.com uh, and for the break tips go to www.hiimpacttips.com. Um, other than that, just Google search Rodney Morris and you'll see what kind of dude he is. You'll see the ferocity that he puts down on the table and you'll see that awesome smile and great light that he is for the pool community. I'm really excited to see him when he comes on. So, super cool. Okay, hold on. Jeff is really <laughs> aw- Jeff is really awkward sometimes. <laughs> I'm not good at this kind of stuff. Uh, side note, but I'm I'm bringing him out of his shell, which we're which working is good. On it. Yeah, he's a, Jeff's a good dude too. I I don't know if you guys know this, but um, he doesn't snore, and that's a positive. <laughs> not saying that we spend a whole bunch of time spending the night with each other or anything like that, but just recent, not recently, but last year we went to. Uh, Oregon to play in the what? Amateur Championship Preliminary Round. Right, and we got a room together to save a little scribble. And uh, but he does come prepared. He has a fan. He has his own barrage of pillows, a whole harem of pillows. And um, I couldn't sleep for nothing because somebody snores and mumbles. And this guy <laughs> smacks your lips. In this guy. Sleep. And I wanted to hold the pillow over him until I yeah. fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Ask Gwen. She wants to do the same thing. Anyway, um... Also, side note, 
Side uh, note. I furnished the script for our stretch video. Mm. I got a really good flow going. Um, and it's not too long. And it's not too difficult. But uh, if you participate and along with the video, we should get some pretty good results. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think we're going to start filming pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, let's think. shoot for a release date of early March. This guy's in marketing, too. Yeah, we're going to be right up there with... Uh, Tony uh, from Beachbody and Bill Billy Blanks. <laughs> so, we're, if you want to see Bolo Young and Thor in some hot pants and some <laughs> shirtless, I mean uh, sleeveless, sleeveless shirts. shirts, fishnets. No, I'm gonna get one. Not just joking. It's not gonna be that vulgar. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna wear masks. I'm gonna get one of those Apollo Creed uh, half <laughs> sweatshirts. <laughs> we are gonna be running down the beach in slow motion. <laughs> You know, since I'm short, I have to be Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> and even though this guy is the whitest guy ever, he'll be the Apollo. So, yeah. Super, super excited about that. Um, Any closing thoughts, Jeff? Yeah, when it comes to practicing by yourself, the biggest key is patience. Just be patient and work through whatever frustrations you're having at the time. That's the biggest key. And work on your weaknesses. That is the most frustrating thing you can do with pool is work on your weaknesses. But when they're no longer your weaknesses, then it's a big thing. And I second that. Uh, I know that I've been... I Okay, so quick story. Quick, quick story. When I first started, uh, when I was... Picked up Q when I was really, really little. But it wasn't the like the normal pool that we're traditionally used to this one was uh little saucer discs made of plastic and um you only had four holes to shoot in and these discs slid and then uh i didn't get into organized pool playing until i was like 21 22 um and to be humbled i started out as a two so yeah but now with all that hard work and and uh, dedication, you know, you get up there and now you're a big bad seven. Now I'm big bad seven, <laughs> <laughs> who gets beat up by lower rated people. Now that's <laughs> awesome. But um, no, pool is something that should be that you look forward to shooting, even if you lose the majority of time, because it's something that you love to do. And I know. Jeff loves to do it. I love to do it. And so do y'all who are on my channel and um, who faithfully hang out with us and whatnot. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate everything that you do for yourself and the pool community by support or either that if you're a creator, thank you so much for um, putting out that good content. Jim, thanks a lot for putting on uh, the virtual pool matches that we all enjoy. Um, Looking forward to shooting in that. Again, you guys, you have to join us next week, uh, February February 4th. We're going to have the legend himself, Rodney Morris, on my channel, in the flesh. No, actually, he's not going to be in the flesh. It will be via phone meet, but um, nonetheless, it's still him. Uh, I look up to him. Uh, he's one of those pros that... Um, I have a lot in common with not not for the fact that we're both islanders and brown but um the adversity i guess uh we have just a lot of commonality so um, come meet a pro get to know him yep. <laughs> i look awkwardly at him like he's supposed to say something all right well that's all the time we have uh thank you very much for Hanging out. Thank you very much for all the comments. Uh, if you haven't done so and you're just catching this on the recast or you're catching us for the first time, give me a subscription. Um, right now, I think I'm at 404. Uh, I know I'd, I'd really like to get the numbers up there. Uh, share it if you can. Uh, leave a comment. That helps out as well. Uh, again, we're going to start putting out some other content. It's not just uh, live streams and... Uh, Pool matches. I do also do instructional videos and whatnot. And Jeff's going to be doing a health and uh, fitness uh, pertaining to pool. Because let's face it, pool is a sport. 
Um, you can get fatigued. You actually can get injured in pool, especially if um, Jeff gets really mad and he picks up a pool and throws it at your head. Yeah. So, or his hammer. Well, luckily, I'm not hot headed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks a lot for hanging out. And like always, hope to see you guys on the table.